Hey guys, welcome back. This is a continuation of the previous episode, but if you're just jumping in wondering how to disable a bunch of buttons, this is the video for you. So essentially what I want to show in this episode is that when you create an event handler like this method here, very simple, you can reuse this event handler for numerous buttons. You know, you might think when you first start, your first thought might be to create a new method for what each button and what happens. But this is very generalized to work with numerous buttons. So that's what I wanted to show you in this episode. So to do that, first I wanted to show you the process of creating a new button. So we'll go to the design on our page and we're just gonna throw a button in here. And don't worry too much about the design right here. I just want to get things working, but just so we can kind of get on the same page, we can link these together so they're always the same distance. All right, so they're always gonna be uh, eight DP by default. So, beautiful. Now what we do is in here on the on click, we can say the same thing, disable, and we can run this app. And the way this works is when we click this first button, this code is going to be executed. And then when we click the second button right here, it's going to execute that same code again. So the first time it's gonna go through each line of this and then it's gonna stop and it's gonna wait for a new event. Then we click the second one and it goes through each line again. So let's run the app and uh, see what happens. So we click that first button, disabled, second button, disabled. Beautiful, so that's how we can kind of generalize, make our program a little bit more useful without having to write a bunch of code over and over and over again. And that's the beauty of methods. We basically extract some functionality give it a name, in this case, disable, and we can reuse it numerous times. So that is the value proposition of using methods. And yeah, it's pretty cool. So just to show you how this works, I threw together this terrible application. I mean, it's all right, but I, we, me and my friend put it together in like 20 minutes while we were playing Call of Duty. So <laughs> it's not amazing by any means, but we're going to basically expand on this concept and try to produce a better version of this application that's a little bit more professional and doesn't look like a third grader designed it. But let me run this thing. Oh, come on. All right, let me set this to false. Sorry. This, You know when you're like trying to show someone something cool and it like doesn't work? That's the worst. All right, let's run this thing. And we will minimize this and we'll wait for our application to refresh over here. All right, so this is a very basic tic-tac-toe. It's not even finished, honestly. We don't have any logic to decide who won because we got really involved in our Call of Duty game and it just took over, so priorities, right? So you click a button, it disables it, and it gives it the value X. So X is first, now it's O's turn. O goes here, it's disabled, and it sets the value to O. X's turn now, and so forth. You get how it works but there's actually no logic to determine that they won. So that's probably the next thing we would implement, plus make the design not look really terrible. <laughs> yeah. But the way this works is we basically just have some variable that exists beyond the method, so kind of like a, it's a class, class level variable, and that will switch from X to O, and then we just assign that to the value here and disable it. So that's how that works. Just wanted to show you guys a little bit more on how to make your methods more useful. So thank you guys. Be sure to subscribe and check out the next video because we're going to talk about logging, which is a very useful tool for debugging and just following along with your program and all kinds of other stuff. So check it out. Be sure to subscribe and I will see you then.